the starting stream, lights are low. A very good evening and a warm welcome to all the Facebook Live platforms of Namibia Media Holdings. My name is Denver Kisting. Welcome to our budget review, this time without the dinner, but with the mask in light of the measures to curb and contain the further spread of COVID-19 in the land of the brave. Today was D-Day, the Minister of Finance, Ipumbushimi, a brand new Minister of Finance, finally tabled the national budget. And we do know it was perhaps the most difficult budget since Namibia became independent in 1990. With an analysis, we're collaborating as Namibia Media Holdings with Standard Bank, Liberty, as well as Price Waterhouse Coopers. So what can you expect in tonight's program? Tax experts, Chantal Hesselman, she's the tax leader at Price Waterhouse Coopers, as well as Johan Nell, he's a tax partner. We'll unpack exactly what this budget means for you, the man on the street, and also the woman on the street. They'll give us an in-depth analysis about exactly what it entails, where the money needs to come from, but also particularly how we'll finance that budget deficit that sounds very alarming at that stage. Towards the end of tonight's broadcast, Ms. Monique Klitter, she is the Chief Executive Officer of Liberty. She'll be bringing us a vote of thanks. Please stay tuned and enjoy the broadcast. Yeah, you must tell people that COVID is serious. Oh, you said it was in the budget. Yeah, yes. you said it was in the budget. Wow. <laughs> 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 the minister, that's very serious. And the people. Joining me outside the National Assembly on this Wednesday, the 27th of May 2020, is the Minister of Finance, Mr. Ipumbu Shimi. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, good afternoon, Denver. How are you feeling on this very important day? It's a bit overwhelming, um, but we have a job to do. Very well. So, and we are ready to do that job. What does that job entail? That, that job entails telling the nation how we have allocated resources to priority areas, especially to fight COVID, save lives, save jobs and save incomes. So I can imagine it must have been a very daunting task. Not only is it your debut tabling the budget as the Minister of Finance, but also amidst this very difficult time. Certainly so. Um, allocating resources is always a difficult task because we have to allocate resources to unlimited ones yeah because the, the kind of things that need that need money are a lot and and you will have to allocate the little money that you have to all those um unlimited ones so that's it, definitely it has been in a difficult task but we as a team we have tried our best and with the support that we have from all Namibians, I believe we shall thrive again as a country. Before we let you go, you've got mm. a very important document in your hands. Yeah. Is there light at the end of the tunnel? What can you tell Namibians? We need to fight COVID together. We shall thrive again together. There is definitely light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you very much, sir, and best of luck. Thank you, sir. Greatly appreciate it. That was the Minister of Finance, Ipun Bishimi, just before he's tabling the budget in the National Assembly this afternoon. Stay tuned. Well, there you have it. That was some footage from this afternoon when the Honourable Minister entered Parliament to produce the budget speech for the 2020-2021. Welcome to all our viewers. My name is Johan Nell. I'm a tax partner at PwC and I'm joined tonight by my colleague Chantelle Hesselman, who is our tax leader for PwC Namibia. Welcome, Chantelle. 
Thank you, Johan, and on my end, also welcome and good evening to our viewers. Chantal, can you give us an overview of what was the main key focus areas that came out from today's budget? Yes, Johan, it's definitely a budget focused on uh, an economy impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. And for the ease of following to our viewers, I've brought along um, a dissect of, of that focus. Um, here we could see where I would now borrow from the budget speech as tabled earlier today. It's themed together defeating COVID-19, together thriving again. And under this theme, four specific focus areas mentioned by Honorable Minister Shimi being to save lives, livelihoods, jobs and income, as well as placing us as Namibia uh, and Namibians in a stronger position to thrive in the foreseeable future. Question would be, how does government um, plan in terms of rolling this out or enabling that goal to come through? So focus areas further identified is a continuation of course, spending on social sectors with specific reference to the health education sectors and the pandemic um, announced economy interventions, for example, the emergency income grant. Also mentioned is the continued provision of essential services and support ongoing capital projects. Moving on to the support of critical infrastructure with specific mentioning of the logistics and the water sector. Um, and then this being a themed, a COVID themed budget, um, it is very much or it's relevant for us to also focus tonight on what is the tracking from government side in terms of the announced economic um, interventions. So it's a lot to mention and it can still be followed on um, our coverage throughout the rest of the week. Four specific um, interventions I would focus on is per the speech the once off emergency income grant has been allocated to 747,000 Namibians totaling 561 million and it's planned that another 120,000 Namibians are to benefit. In terms of the planned settlement of government supplier debts, um, the speech indicates that the depicted 1.2 million debt has already been settled as well as the undisputed VAT refunds um, estimated at 3 billion of that 1.8 billion has already been paid to VAT entities. In the same breath, a new announcement not mentioned specifically um, when, the, when, the, when there was a first rollout of the economic interventions is a planned waiving of levies on paraffin oil, um, which is seen as a basic household commodity, where, for example, few levies currently stuck in the price is 90 cents per litre. As I said, Johan, a lot to mention, but um, let us move on with an overview in terms of what does the budget say on the outlook of debt stock as a percentage of GDP and also our debt levels. So for 2019 and 20, uh, the estimated debt stock was at 96.7 billion. This budget does uh, project a steep incline to 117.5 billion. That will be a growth of 54.8% uh, debt stock as percentage of GDP to 68.7%. So definitely the cost of servicing this debt, if we take that as a percentage of revenue, we can expect an increase of 13.5 to 16.4%. Um, on that note, Johan, not a, not a too positive picture, but indeed a relevant budget for a COVID impacted economy. Thank you, Chantel. Yes, indeed, some, some worrying uh, stats there. So moving on, I'm sure everybody's curious about what happened on the revenue side. How did COVID impact the revenue budget for this year? Um, let us have a look, Johan. It's best explained by visualizing it. So what we have brought along in dissecting expected revenue levels would be if we focus on estimated revenue levels for the 2019-20 year, that was at 58.5 billion. And then for the current 2020-21 year, that is a, a budgeted reduction in tax revenue to 51.3 billion. And one can see the corresponding increase in expenditure 
obviously having a negative impact on the budgeted deficit levels for the 2021 year. Um, it's budgeted to um, increase to 21.3 billion, which is also 12.5% of GDP. A further dissect of our dependency on, on tax revenue, Johan, I would like to continue with that. So Namibia being um, a country heavily reliant on tax revenue collections, one can see the, the figures there, 95% tax revenue and 5% being non-tax revenue. So question would be, what does the 95% comprises? So given all the current taxes in Namibia, Johan, let us have a look. And this clearly shows our dependency in terms of contributions from the customs and excise SACU revenue pool. This year's outlook is that uh, tax revenue is depicted at 46%. And then on all the other taxes, being a pandemic impacted economy, um, varying from pay as you earn to company tax to value added tax collections, the budget projects steep decreases in the range of 20 to 32% on the respective taxes um, in terms of total tax revenue collection. So I conclude on the revenue analysis with such a, a budget where we have such high dependency, where the budget is, in the words of the minister, anchored by the projected revenue from the SACU pool. Um, we can see the, the expected inflows. So that would be actual 17 billion for 2018-19 estimated increase to 18.19 for 2019 and 20 and then budgeted increase for the current year to 22 billion uh, but with that said uh, one could expect that um, in the next financial year one could expect a significant drop again in, in the in the SACU revenue um, giving the current pandemic impacted economic situation thank you Chantal that's that's very clear indeed I hope the viewers followed that as well so, as of course, with any budget, there's a revenue side and there's an expenditure side. So what I'm going to be doing is to look into a bit more detail on the expense side. So if we can go to, to the following graph that shows us, just as Chantel has already indicated, there is a significant deficit being budgeted here of 21.375 billion. So that equates to about 12.5% of the GDP which in prior years it was only around 4.7%. Now, as you would know with any uh, budgeting, if you've done it personally, the moment your expenses become more than your revenue, you are in for trouble. And that's exactly what's happening in this budget now. To make up what is the major components of this uh, expenses, you'll see that personnel expenditure still being by far one of the most significant items in there. So that equates to about 48, almost 50%. Uh, 48%, 49% of the personnel expenditure is in the budget. And the government uh, has indicated this, this afternoon when the Honourable Minister presented that they will be doing an assessment uh, of the strategy to see if they can right-size the public service uh, wage bill to make it more affordable for the taxpayer. Now, we're looking forward to that, and I know there's a lot of analysts that have been uh, crying for that for quite some time, so hopefully in the future we can see the benefits of that. Then you'll have the, another item on there of goods and services. That is typically your utilities, transport, S&T allowances, etc. And then another big one is the subsidies and other current transfers. Now, the majority of that, almost 10 billion, is for government organizations. Unfortunately, due to a lack of time, we could not get exactly to the bottom of to which uh, ministries or specific SOEs that is being given. But uh, again, just to emphasize, there's quite a big amount that's being uh, given for the government organizations on that. And then, of course, interest payments, still quite a big one. Of course, we need to finance this deficit somehow. And as a result of that, uh, you will see that there's quite a significant component of the interest also included in that budget, which will probably go up in the future. If we then move along to which sectors got the biggest allocation, so as in prior years, education is still pretty much on the top there, um, along with health and social services. So you'll see some increase there, especially on health and social services, a 15% increase, mainly re relating to the fact that there was some additional funding provided to, to, uh, as a result of the COVID impact. 
Then you'll have the defense. Now, um, a lot of people may want to joke about this, but the reason why that may have been increased, you will note that there's quite a lot of military uh, around at the roadblocks trying to obfuscate what they so-called uh, illegal alcohol. So hopefully this is not an indication of what's going to happen in the future. Uh, but nevertheless, there is a slight increase in, in the Ministry of Defense, um, which has been the, the norm for the last couple of years. On the finance side, a pretty big increase uh, included there that is causing that increase is the wage subsidy, which is under the Social Security Commission of about 400 million. And then also, of course, there is the funding of the CMAS Medical, the, the government medical, which is around 2.6 billion that's in there. And a lot of people are also doubting whether that is an affordable thing that can be taken forward in the future. Um, so that is something to consider for the minister going forward. The rest of the expense is pretty much the same. Uh, no major fluctuations in that. When we look at the expenditure execution rates, you will see that the government has been successful in spending the budget. So if the budget is there, you can spend it. And they've been successful in that. Uh, by in prior years, you would have seen there was an increase from 87% up to 99.6% in 2018-19. And it's projected that in the current year that ended 31 March, there was a 99.5% execution rate on the operational expenditure side. And on the development budget, another 83.2% was the execution rate in terms of that. Now, moving to, to one further slide, you will see that when we look at the spending priorities, that came from the budget. There is, of course, the COVID-19 stimulus package has previously been announced. And Chantel did give a, a detailed breakdown of what entails the, the amounts in there. So that's things like your tax pack loan scheme, of course, your, your subsidies in terms of, um, not subsidies, the payments to service, uh, service suppliers, the VAT refunds, building school infrastructures, government guaranteed loans, etc. So that is quite a big one that was in the budget in terms of spending priority. And then, as was the case in prior years, your social sector allocation, also quite a big allocation. Almost 50% of the operational budget goes into there. So that is about health and education and social services. And then your public sa safety sector allocation, 20% of the budget. So that's your Ministry of Defense and Veteran Affairs. And the last spending priority that we just want to highlight is that there was an increase in the development budget of 8.4% on the prior year. So, and that is mainly to, to make good on commitments in terms of water infrastructure, road infrastructure, and then also some initiatives with NAM power on energy, renewable energy. So Chantel, before we move on, what are the tax proposals or policy reforms that came out this afternoon? Yes, Johan. In, in the past, we used to spend some time on announced structural policy reforms or just the tracking of previously announced policy reforms. But um, it is the minister's intent to have the, the budget speaking to the current um, economic times. It's uncertain times we find ourselves in. So the speech did indicate that unlike prior year, uh, for this year's approach, the, the policy reforms will be presented during the mid-year budget review. So that will be around October 2020, um, allowing um, the minister to be cognizant of the global and the local impact of COVID-19. Um, but if we proceed to have a look at certain key tax administration reforms that has been announced, um, that would now involve the establishment of the Namibian Revenue Agency, which is well underway. Um, then also we know that the ITES system has already been deployed, so that the focus would then move to enhancing the system and getting more taxpayers on using the system. And then there's also a mention of a focus on regional and international tax cooperation. Uh, moving on to the tax incentive program that's currently running till the end of June, where this targeted recovery of arrear taxes. And then a final mention on tax admin reforms being um, a focus on tax administration efficiency. So if I now move to um, specific tax proposals or amend amendments, proposed amendments, um, yeah, so allow me to start off indicating that we luckily do not foresee 
an increase in the existing legislation rates from an individual tax or from a corporate tax or a value added tax perspective. But in the same brief, the budget also does not make provision for any relief if in a possible reduction of those rates. So the, the mentioned tax proposals, there's a lot I have nine listed, uh, but of which only number one is a newly mentioned. Um, and that is just to incorporate um, a mandatory requirement for VAT registered entities to issue VAT tax invoices, which is currently not legislated. The rest in terms of number two to nine is um, proposals that has been mentioned in the previous years and just reiteration from the new minister's side that it is on the agenda to continue with stakeholder discussions and policy um, development on these announcements. Um, if we can have a final look then at tax proposals previously mentioned uh, but not mentioned or a specific withdrawal mentioned in this year's budget speech. Um, I would then move along to um, the five proposals there. So only the first one on the, um, the previously mention of disallowing royalty payments by non-diamond mining companies. So per this year's speech, there's specific mention of the withdrawal of that proposal. And then number two to five, are previously mentioned proposals not mentioned again, which one can then take as not as high up on the agenda of the Minister Jan. Good, thank you very much, Chantel. So a lot of our viewers are probably anxious for all the bottle stores to open for the sale of alcohol, or like beverages. Uh, just a note of caution. So uh, already on the 27th of February, there's been some new uh, prices introduced. And uh, we're going to have a look at that on, on the next slide, just to give you an overview of what is it that you're going to be paying more in terms of your sin taxes. Uh, so when you get the chance to sin after lockdown, this is what is going to cost you extra. So for a bottle of spirits, let's call it a bottle of Jameson whiskey, uh, around $2.90 in additional um, of, of, of excise duties and taxes that's going to be introduced there. Cigarettes, 74 cents a packet. A sparkling wine 61 cents and then your wine 24 cents and then the list goes on if you have a look at that it's not going to break your your budget potentially but nevertheless you need to be aware that these things do get more and more expensive and if you're going to be buying in bulk which i'm sure many of you will it's going to have quite an impact on your on your monthly spend Chantel, uh, last year you did an analysis of a bottle of wine and how much of this bottle of wine is actually made up of taxes. So I understand this year uh, you've done something similar for a jerry can of fuel. Can you give us some more details on that? Yes, John. So since we are not spending on, on the alcoholic beverages, we are definitely still spending on fuel. And we do have a much welcomed uh, reduction in the, in the fuel prices. So I've brought along an analysis of the total tax contribution per a 20 liter jerry can of 95 unleaded petrol. So we depict this at this picture at pre-lockdown and post-lockdown as we all are aware of the, the price reduction. So yet, but despite the price reduction, our total tax contribution effectively increased from 29% in February um, to 34% in April, as the taxes included in the price remained the same, which is per liter based, um, whereas um, it, it comprises of, for example, customs duties, the MVA levy, customs fuel levy, the road user charges. Um, so that is just for interesting sake for viewers to note that with every tank being filled up, there is indeed a contribution made to taxes to feel proud of. Chantel, do you, do you know the joke about the jerry can? You can enlighten me. So apparently the guys were sitting around the fire and uh, somebody was asking, who can drink 20 liters of whiskey? And everybody was baffled. They said, well, there's just no way. So the one guy said, well, jerry can. <laughs> so well, you are. For, for the viewers that are not... Uh, up to speed yet, you'll probably start laughing later on tonight when you do catch it, but uh, that's just a bit of humor from our side. Well, there you have it, the budget in the spotlight. Uh, please don't go away. Please remember also that you can follow this conversation 
when the Honourable Minister joins us on Friday at 9 o'clock in studio. For now, please stay tuned as we have a final word from our sponsors with uh, Mrs. Monique Kluter, the Managing Director of Liberty Life Namibia, up next. Good evening, viewers. I trust that you enjoyed the session with Johan and Chantal. It's a very different experience to be talking to you and engaging with you through what is now widely accepted as our new normal. During any other time, we would have been seated in a conference venue, at a local hotel, and at about this time, we'd have been enjoying dinner. And we would have been in our formal way. Tonight, however, this discussion we can have with you in the comfort of your own home. You're most probably in less formal wear than we are, while you're trying to stave off the winter cold. Undoubtedly, a new normal has resulted from the COVID-19 pandemic, which is forcing us to adapt to a world that just a few months ago, we only understood through slide presentations and radio interviews as the fourth industrial revolution. Although our physical circumstances for our discussion has changed slightly, I'm indeed glad that technology has granted us the opportunity 
to continue to have such robust discussions around our national budget. Our fight against coronavirus should not be seen as a fight against our economy as well. Many hold the opinion that the two cannot coexist. However, our government, working together with private sector and other community-based organizations, such as NGOs and the church, are able to put signif a significant dent in this virus while maintaining our economy. To achieve this, we are all asked to work together as highlighted in the theme of the budget today, being together defeating COVID-19, together thriving again. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the sponsors of what continues to be a highlight in our annual calendar. Price Waterhouse Coopers, represented earlier by Chantal um, Hisselman and Johan Nell, Namibia Media Holdings, in whose studios we are seated this evening, Standard Bank Namibia and Liberty Life Namibia. Please note that this evening was just a teaser. We look forward to sharing more discussion with you on Friday morning at 9 o'clock when we will reconvene and the Honorable Ipumbu Shimi will answer a few questions for us. So for now, thank you for joining us and listening to the discussions around the budget in a spotlight. Have a wonderful evening and please, Namibians, continue to be safe. I thank you.